Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends and today we are going to study a numerical problem number 4 which is based on a realization but in discrete time system. Now in these three coming numericals or you can say the coming numerical and next two numericals are completely based on cascade form and parallel form. Now in cascade and parallel form we will always use you are going to use a df2 structure or you can say a direct form 2 structure now we'll see the question first and then we'll move on to solution problem number four the transfer function of a discrete time causal system is given by h of z is given 1 minus z inverse 1 minus 0.2 z inverse minus 0.15 z to the power minus 2 and what is mentioned draw cascade and parallel realization now in cascade what we want basically in cascade format or in cascade realization we have to factorize we are going to factorize or we need to factorize in numerator and denominator and once we get a factorized format then just place one factor of numerator and denominator on one side and multiply it with another factor of numerator and denominator on second side and this will give us a two different transfer function and we will draw a separate df2 form for separate transfer functions now in parallel format what we are going to do we are going to use a partial fraction technique and in that partial fraction technique you will get the values of a and b and we will use that a and b values for a realization now let's see how we are going to proceed or what will be our solution h of z is given 1 minus z inverse in numerator and denominator we have 1 minus 0.2 z inverse minus 0.15 z to the power minus 2 now basically first of all i'm going to plot a cascade format or cascade realization Now, in cascade form, what we want, we are going to factorize numerator as well as denominator. Basically, in numerator, we have only one factor, 1 minus z inverse, but in denominator, we have an equation. So, we are going to factorize denominator because we are having one equation in the denominator side. Now, what are the factors? The first factor is minus 0.3 and second factor is 0.5. Reason is, here the last term is always product of two digits and here we have 0.15 so if we multiply it 5 and 3 then of course you will get the 15 so i'm going to consider a 0.5 and 0.3 is my result but which term or which number is having a negative sign and which one is having a positive sign that will be total depends on the next value because this value is addition of two digits so if i place a minus sign in front of 0.5 then the minus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 result is minus 0 0.2 and a product of two digits is always negative because 0 0.3 is having plus sign and minus 0 0.5 is having negative sign a 0 0.3 is having a plus sign and 0 0.5 is having a minus sign so my factors are represented in z inverse like So these are the two factors now what is the next step as i told you once you have got these factors then do one thing separate numerator and denominator and just form a two different transfer functions so now look at here in numerator we have only one factor that is 1 minus z inverse and if i multiplied it by 1 then you can say that this is nothing but my second factor now if you want then you can keep this 1 minus z inverse with 1 plus 0.3 z inverse or else keep this 1 minus z inverse with 1 minus 0.5 z inverse now look at here i am going to keep 1 minus z inverse with 1 plus 0.3 z inverse and 1 with this next factor so i will get two different transfer functions and these are my two different transfer functions let's say this first part is nothing but my h1 of z and the second part is nothing but my h2 of z 
The cascade form means what? Here the two transfer functions are connected in series or you can say two systems are connected in series. The first system is designed by using H1 of Z and second is designed by using H2 of Z. So just draw DF2 structure for H1 of Z and just connect second H2 of Z by just drawing DF2 structure for it. Now we will draw a DF1 structure for H1 of Z and then for H2 of Z and I will connect both these in series. So first of all look at here. We have already calculated the H1 of Z and H2 of Z. My H1 of Z is 1 minus Z inverse and 1 plus 0.3 Z inverse. And my H2 of Z is 1 upon 1 minus 0.5 Z inverse. I have just compared this H1 of Z and H2 of Z with the standard form of transfer function equation. And after comparing what I have got, B0 value is 1. Here my B1 value is always placed. So and its value is minus 1. Here the A1 value is 0.3 look at it on second side here my b0 value is 1 and my a1 value is minus 0.5 and just place all these values on df2 structure because as i told you in parallel form as well as in cascade form we will always prefer a df2 structure because it is less complex or you can say it requires a less memory element now move on to next as i told you one more thing also if you have a space to write all the coefficients value inside this buffer then you can write but if you don't have then just connect one line and on line just write that values of all the coefficients now here in df2 structure we know that all the values of v placed on right hand side and all the values of a placed on left hand side so here my b0 value is 1 so here i'm going to write b0 is 1 here my b1 value is minus 1 and my a1 value is 0.3 and we know that a is all the coefficients of a or you can say all the constants a always multiplied with minus sign so answer is minus 0.3 and this is my first h1 of z similarly do the next thing with h2 of z now here my b0 value is 1 so just write here b0 is 1 and my a1 value is minus 0.5 so if i multiply this constant by minus sign this value is plus and it is plus 0.5 and this is the cascade form of given structure now we will move on to parallel parallel means what here the cascade all the transfer functions are connected in series but in parallel all the functions will be placed in parallel manner now how to achieve this parallel manner by just performing a partial fraction Now, a parallel form. Here, the h of z in question it is already given 1 minus z inverse, 1 minus 0.2 z inverse, minus 0.15 z to the power minus 2. Now, as I told you, a parallel format can be obtained by using partial fraction method, which means first of all, we will factorize this denominator. And we know that factors because we have already done this in cascade format. Now look at here, if we have a two factors, then we will use always a two variables. Now, here we will calculate the values of A and B and after calculating the A B values, we will plot a parallel structure which is completely based on this equation. So that's why I'm going to write this equation is nothing but my number one now we will perform a partial fraction so just simply multiply this denominator of left hand side on right hand side what you will get so this will be my equation now we are going to substitute z inverse value such that automatically this a and b value get cancelled So I'm going to put z inverse equal to, you can say a simply 2 in this equation. What you will get? If I put z inverse equals to 2, then 2 into 
answer is 1 and 1 minus 1 becomes 0 so hold a term gets replaced by 0 so i'm not going to write that value now on left hand side we have z inverse and it is replaced by 2 so 1 minus 2 answer is minus 1 and look at here on right hand side here we have 0.3 into z inverse if this z inverse is replaced by 2 then 2 into 0.3 is 0.6 and that will be added with 1 so answer is 1.6 so if i shift this 1 by 6 on left hand side what you will get a minus 1 upon 1.6 or else you can write this one as minus 10 by 16 but now if we divide both this side further by 2 then you will get minus 5 by 8 and this will be my final result of b now i'm going to do the same thing with a by just substituting z inverse by minus 1 upon 0.3 so just i'm going to substitute z inverse equal to minus 1 upon 0.3 or else you can say minus 10 by 3 So we'll substitute this value in equation number 2. So just put this value in this equation. What you will get? Look at here. This z inverse. You can substitute 1 minus 1 by 0.3 or else minus 10 by 3. So in both this z inverse i'm going to substitute minus 10 by 3 and in last z inverse i'm going to substitute 1 by minus 0.3 so on left hand side what you will get if i replace this z inverse by minus 10 by 3 answer will be plus 10 by 3 because this minus sign will change its sign similarly look at here here we have 1 minus 0.5 but that value is multiplied with minus 10 by 3 so this minus and this minus will give us a plus value answer is a 10 by 3 and in the last what we have as i told you i'm here i'm going to replace z inverse by minus 1 by 0 0.3 so this 0 0.3 0 0.3 will get cancelled and 1 plus or minus 1 will have 1 minus 1 and it will become 0 and 0 into b is 0 so i'm not going to write this value in next step now just do the cross multiplication what you will get 3 into 1 is 3 plus 10 is 13 by 3 now look at here on right hand side we have a into bracket 1 plus 0 0.5 10 by 3 just do just this multiplication what you will get a 10 by 3 is you can say a 3.33 something and if i multiply it with the 0.5 what you will get you can simply substitute 10 into 0.5 is 5 by 3 and just do the addition what you will get after multiplying this 3 with 1 the result would be by 3 and now shift this 8 by 3 on right hand side what you will get now substitute this a value and b value in equation number 1 now look at here right now i have substituted the values of a and b in equation number one basically in cascade format cascade means the two different transfer functions are connected in series that's why we have calculated h1 of z and h2 of z separately by factorizing numerator and denominator but in parallel format here all the factors or you can say all the transfer functions are connected in parallel so let's say this is nothing but my h1 of z this first part and the second part is nothing but my 
H2 of Z. And we are going to connect both these parts in parallelly. So first of all, we will draw H1 of Z and then later on we will draw H2 of Z. Now, look at here. This first part gives us a value of h1 of z. So, just compare this h1 of z with a transfer function or standard format of transfer function. This numerator value always gives us a value of b0 and it is 13 pi 8. And in denominator, here we have a1 value which is 0.3 and we know that we will always multiply this 0.3 by minus sign or you can say a constant value e by minus sign so answer is minus 0.3 now next one look at here in second part in h2 of z this is the block for h2 of z here my b value is minus 5 by 8 so likewise you can plot or write and now and my a1 value is minus 0.5 and if I multiply it with the minus sign this minus will replace by plus and we have plus a point and we have plus 0.5 as a result and both these values are added at the end of circuit and you will get a y of n now look at here here the starting point of h1 of z and h2 of z is same as well as the terminating point or end point of both this part or transfer function is same that's why we can say that both this h1 of z and h2 of z are connected in parallel and this is all about a parallel structure now we will solve a similar numerical or similar type of numericals in next two videos also now thank you for watching this video stay tuned with ikda and subscribe to ikda for further more videos thank you so much